Hey guys, Nishquick here, and welcome back to another episode of Nishquick Talks. I haven't done this in a while because I was working on a lot of long, pretty detailed and edited videos, so I'm glad to just kind of have a few of these casual discussions to bide the time in between longer videos. And today, I'm talking about something I haven't talked about in a very, very long time, and that is Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> and specifically the Nintendo Switch 2. And you guys might have actually noticed I haven't talked about Nintendo a lot on the channel lately and I haven't really been talking about Nintendo lately. And I'll get into that near the end of this video, but basically what I want to talk about today is now that the Switch 2 is officially confirmed to exist, or the Switch successor is confirmed to exist by Mr. Shintaro Furukawa himself, I want to talk about one aspect of this whole console successor and console transition that's been really on my mind this past like two or even three years. It's really been on my mind ever since the Switch Pro stuff, honestly, so even longer than that. So this whole thing is backwards compatibility and more specifically backwards compatibility and enhanced versions of some games. What's kind of a coincidence is I wanted to talk about this concept and this topic for a while now. But lately, there has been news that directly relates to this, so it's gonna be a pretty exciting chat today, and I have some things I'm excited for, but also pretty nervous for, so if you guys are excited for the future of Nintendo and JRPGs and the successor to Nintendo Switch, hit the like button and subscribe because I might be talking more about <laughs> Nintendo in the upcoming months and in the next year or so. So anyways, you guys might know Midori. Uh, I'm assuming many of my viewers know who Midori is. I'm assuming you guys know about the Sega and Atlas leaker, Midori, who has leaked so many things, Persona 3 Reload, The Answer, hinting at stuff about Metaphor, SMT5 engines, all that stuff. And now she's doing some Nintendo leaks. And the coolest thing that she's said recently is the whole, I think it's called You King O. Basically, long story short, you can watch other Nintendo YouTubers talk about it more in detail, but it's rumored to be a Breath of the Wild enhanced version for the Switch successor. And that, that that's that's cool, Breath of the Wild at 60 FPS. But I want to talk about now how other consoles have done this enhanced version or enhanced re-release or whatever you want to call it. Specifically PlayStation from the PS4 to PS5. What I remember since I was an early adopter of the PS5, I remember that there were some specific games that already had some boosts with the PS4 Pro, like God of War 2018, Dark Souls 3, Sekiro. Some of these games on the base PS4 were 30 FPS, and the PS4 Pro, they were unlocked to 60 or 45 or something like that, 40 FPS. But on the PS5, you had enhanced resolutions and enhanced frame rates because I think the games just had uncapped frame rates and dynamic resolution. And that was really cool because those were free, you just download a patch and you can just play them. I remember I bought Ghost of Tsushima in early like 2021 and I played it with a little bit of a resolution boost, but I played it at 60 FPS and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. I get to play that on the PS5 at 60 FPS because I didn't have a PS4, but I'm playing it in the best way on PS5. But, a few months later, that same year, Ghost of Tsushima got its own kind of director's cut or definitive edition, and that was a new SKU, it was a new game that they sold, separate from the vanilla Ghost of Tsushima. It was Ghost of Tsushima director's cut with all the DLC and added kind of story expansion, and there was more PS5 like technical boost. Like, uh, higher resolution, uh, dual sense capabilities, all that crazy stuff. No 120 FPS though. Ah, darn. But I never got that because I beat the game or I played most of the game before that even happened and I was like, I don't feel like getting the game again. But luckily for me, if I did want to get that director's cut, there was I think a 10 or 20 dollar upgrade path towards that 
director's cut version, but it would have been the digital version. If I wanted to get the physical version, it would have been another $70 game. So with PlayStation, you either have the free patch, free upgrade, you can just go from the PS4 version to the enhanced PS4 version, or in some instances like Horizon Forbidden West, I think they did this, and they stopped doing this with, when it came to God of War Ragnarok and beyond. And even with Elden Ring, I remember doing this, you could go from the PS4 version to the base PS5 version for free. It was a free upgrade path to the new version of the game. That PS5 version was like a new kind of separate version of the game from the PS4 version, right? And then in some instances, there was go from the PS4 version to the PS5 version. Sometimes you would have to pay like a $10 upgrade fee or $20 upgrade fee. Or in some instances, if the company hates their consumers like Atlas, you would have to rebuy the entire game like Persona 5 Royal. <laughs> that, that that was that was the worst. But anyways, I'm just curious, what the heck is Nintendo going to do? Because this U King O thing kind of makes me feel like I have an idea of what they're going to do and I don't think I'm going to like it. Here's my history with Breath of the Wild, by the way. I played that game for 300 hours on many systems. I played it on the Wii U, I played it on the Switch, I've played it in other ways that I don't want to talk about too much, but I've played that game a lot. And like I said, I got it on the Wii U and I got it on the Switch as well. If this U King O game is relating to Breath of the Wild, and if it has its own code name, I'm assuming it's going to be its own SKU, its own game. It's going to be a separate version of Breath of the Wild. A version that is separate from the one that we already have on the Nintendo Switch eShop right now. So it'll be an entirely new game. And with Nintendo being Nintendo, with them just being who they are and what they are, I can totally see them charging $70 for a 4K 60fps or maybe even higher, I don't even know for a 4K 60fps version of Breath of the Wild with all the DLC on the cartridge. I can honestly see them doing that. And that doesn't sit right with me, and I'll tell you why. I am really looking forward to Nintendo Switch 2, and the whole backwards compatibility thing is... I'm, I'm pretty optimistic on it, but I'm more excited to play a lot of my old games with this performance boost, with hopefully free upgrades, hopefully upgrades that I don't have to pay a whole lot for. I hope they're free, because I'll give you a little perspective on this. To me, there are at least six or even seven games that I would want to play a bit more on the Switch successor with enhanced frame rates, enhanced resolution. I'll, I'll list them out right now. Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. I would love to do another Tears of the Kingdom playthrough with enhanced resolution and frame rate, but here's more. The entire Xenoblade Chronicles trilogy, that's three games, that's up to five now. And I'm thinking, like, I haven't done all the routes in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and that game is... it's, it's a rough game in terms of visuals, not so much on the frame rate side, but on the visuals, it's... it, it could be better, so there's a sixth game there, and... Maybe if they do an Astral Chain upgrade, I would want to do Astral Chain as well. And maybe, like, I don't know, Mario Odyssey, they could easily bump it up to 4K from, what is it? It's like sub 1080p right now, right? I can totally see them doing Mario Odyssey at 4K or like 1440p. That's, I've counted at least eight games now, I think. I think that's eight games. That's insane. And to give you a perspective, I don't think they're going to do entire new releases of all eight of these games like even like especially like astral chain three houses you know later trilogy they're not gonna re-release these games i don't think those would sell very well if they did that. I mean, if they did the Xenoblade trilogy with the DLC on the card, that would be pretty cool, honestly. But my issue is this. Breath of the Wild's getting its own version with its own skew. But then think about, like what I said before, if they're 
are $10 upgrade paths to these new versions of these games. $10, let's say $10, let's be optimistic about this. $10. If you have the physical version or if you have the digital version on your Switch, if you pay $10, you can upgrade that to the Switch 2 version. Think about that. Tears of the Kingdom, Xenoblade Definitive Edition, Xenoblade 2, Xenoblade 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Astral Chain, Mario Odyssey. That's... that's... If it's the best case scenario that it's a $10 upgrade path for all these games, that's $70 right there. That's $70. And then, Breath of the Wild is coming. Another $70 game. I probably won't get the Breath of the Wild Definitive Edition, so that doesn't apply to me. But what does apply to me, along with the seven $10 upgrade paths that I could potentially have to pay for, is the price for the Switch 2 itself. Maybe like $400, $450. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Depending on how much they sell it for. That's another thing. Also, I don't want to just play old games on my Switch 2. I don't want to play new games as well. Like, preferably if they do Mario Kart or Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime 4 is the game I'm looking forward to the most. I would want to play the Switch 2 version of that. Or, if they release it this year, with no Switch 2 this year, I would want to upgrade Metroid Prime 4 from the Switch 1 version to the Switch 2 version. That would probably go into the $10 upgrade pile. Or, if I just get the Metroid Prime 4 physical version on Switch 2, I would probably pay $70 for that game itself, along with $70 to upgrade all my Switch 1 games. <sighs> I'm rambling quite a bit, but you get the point. I never have, like, talked about Nintendo's anti-consumerism much on this channel, but I just, I, I just hope this transition is a smooth one, you know? My ideal hope is free upgrades for all of my Switch 1 games. Because, like, I would love to play the Xenoblade games in higher resolutions, in 60 FPS, it would look so nice and feel so good. And replaying Tears of the Kingdom like that would be amazing as well. But when I saw that tweet from Midori, and when I realized that, that code name was entirely Breath of the Wild related, I was like, they're probably going to re-release that game. And it's going to be a $70 game that they're going to re-release. Who says they won't do it for other games? Maybe Breath of the Wild is the exception because they just want a Zelda game out at launch, but like, that doesn't bode well to me. Of course, Breath of the Wild might be the only $70 re-release they do, but if they're willing to go that length to re-release a game with a new SKU, akin to what Sony did for The Last of Us Part 1, who's to say that I would have to pay 10 or $20 for all my Switch 1 games to be upgraded to Switch 2 versions? Because if you remember, if we're talking about The Last of Us here, Last of Us Part 1 was a re-release and a remake, they called it a remake, I don't know, you can argue whatever you want for that, I, I don't really care. but. They re-released that game, new SKU, new box art, new PSN version, whatever. It, it was just a new game for the PS5. And it was a $70 game. For The Last of Us 2, they were a little more generous. I think they did sell it for $70, but if someone had The Last of Us Part 2, the PS4 physical version or digital version, they could upgrade to the PS5 version for $10, or I think it was $10. But I thought that was really funny, actually. When I saw that news from Sony, I kind of chuckled because I've seen The Last of Us Part Two being sold for like 10, 15 bucks. So I was like, what if I just get the game for 10 bucks, upgrade it to the PS5 version? I don't need to buy the $70 version that they're selling. So like this whole, transition from base version to successor version, it's a little confusing and like even when Sony was doing it for Horizon and God of War, it got a little like confusing to a lot of people. And I remember I was confused, my friends were confused, a lot of people online were confused, and it's just kind of like a dodgy kind of thing. And if they want this transition to be smooth, if they want everything to be just a nice transition from Switch 1 to Switch 2, I really hope they make the right decisions here. 
I really hope they don't, like, fumble it too much. Like, this Breath of the Wild Definitive Edition or whatever you want to call it, I can let that slide, I guess, whatever. But even if I don't get it, it doesn't really apply to me, but when it comes to all my other Switch 1 games I can see on my shelf right now, I hope they make the right decision, and I hope I don't have to pay an arm and a leg to get the best Switch 2 experience whenever I get that system, because like I said, paying for all my upgrades, paying for the games, paying for the console, it's its gonna be your whole classic Nintendo experience that all the Nintendo critics say, like remember Skyward Sword, buying the game, buying the amiibo, buying the Joy-Cons, uh, it's an entire hole in your wallet, just charred. Anyways, I want to end this video off with an explanation as to why I haven't been talking about Nintendo that much and kind of where that's gonna go from now on henceforth because I've been rambling on quite a bit right now. So you guys might kind of know why I haven't been talking about Nintendo for this past year. It's kind of obvious. If you guys have been watching other Nintendo YouTubers, you guys might know that this year was kind of meh. There's not much that came out, not much that interested me. The only thing that I'm really looking forward to, I guess, is maybe Paper Mario. I haven't even decided if I want to get that game yet. And there was not many directs, there was not many announcements, not many new games. The Switch 2 was delayed from its projected 2024 release to sometime next year. So there was a lot of things up in the air and I just wasn't really interested in Nintendo. And I've just been really, really, really in a JRPG mood lately. I've been playing a lot of really fun classic games, a lot of fun retro games, a lot of games that are really story focused. And I'm also going back to other older Switch games and kind of reminiscing about those and kind of thinking about content for those games as well, specifically the Xenoblade games, and I haven't really talked about Zelda much, but I might get back into making Zelda videos. I just haven't been much in a Nintendo or even a Zelda mood re recently, and a lot of that came down to just aimlessly predicting and speculating on things we had no idea about, or we had very little evidence to come to any sort of subst substantial conclusions when it comes to gaming leaks, rumors, or any of that. And the thing is, you guys know with this channel, you can see the videos I've been putting out. I don't talk about news and speculation and all that stuff that much. I really don't. I don't really enjoy talking about all that, but when it comes to like the Switch 2 hype, it's starting to pick up pace now. Nintendo has acknowledged it. We're getting more substantial I guess leaks and details about the specs and the hardware specifications and with Midori and Pioro talking about some of the games and all that, it's, it's getting to be a little more exciting now. So I guess I was just waiting for something like this. I was waiting for things to kind of warm up a bit so it would be more exciting to talk about a lot of this stuff because if I was like pushing out Nintendo content in like February or March, I would really have been pushing it and the content would have sucked. I just didn't really feel like making a lot of Nintendo videos and and that's kind of like the blessing I guess I have with Niche Cook Pops, this channel, being both Nintendo and RPG related. Like, if there's not a lot of games coming out that I'm interested in, maybe there's other games on other systems that I'm interested in. Like, my whole first half of the year was chock full with Persona 3 Reload and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. And if there's no new Nintendo games to play and talk about, or no news to really speculate on, I have like JRPGs on PS5 and Steam and even on Switch, like a, lo a lot of third-party games that I can talk about and ramble about and make videos on, and if anything, there's tons and tons and tons of Xenoblade lore that I can talk your guys' ear off of, and if you guys didn't know, that's another thing I've been up to. I've started the Conduit cast with my buddy Kevin, the protagonist, and we have been enjoying some pretty relatively good success on our very new podcast channel, so you guys should, so you guys should check that out down below, and 
yeah, I just wanted to end off with that. A little bit of an update, a little bit of an explanation as to why I haven't been talking about some various topics and games and things like that. But with things picking up in terms of new speculation, hype cycle for Switch 2, I might be talking about this stuff more. And whenever that June Direct comes that Furukawa talked about, I'll definitely be reacting to that. And I really hope we see that Fire Emblem 4 remake there. So anyways, let me know what you thought about this casual discussion in terms of backwards compatibility and version enhancements from Switch 1 to Switch 2. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. I hope I wasn't too confusing if you guys have any questions or clarification because I just kind of mind and word dumped everything. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to clarify anything and I've been talking about this to some of my friends. I've been hearing some other people make videos and talk about this as well so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Anyways, like, subscribe for more Nintendo and RPG content like this. This is Nishquick signing off. Have a great day. Go play some great games today, like a whole bunch of games that are on the Nintendo Switch, which will hopefully be easily upgradable to the Nintendo Switch 2. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later. Hey guys, this is Nishquick. Thank you so much for watching this video. And special shout out to my channel members, AD2014, Durzo Blint, and Sam Talks Games. I could not have done this without you guys. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two videos on the left, and why not hit the subscribe button on the way out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.